Oh, hi. Sorry, I, I didn't see you there. Uh, my name is Joan of Heart, and this is my Petal Playhouse. Uh, you kind of caught me in the middle of looking at the uh, Old Blood Noise Endeavors Sunlight Petal, um, and I was kind of having uh, a little bit of a tough time trying to figure out how I'm going to demo this petal. I mean, there's a lot going on with it, so to kind of try to narrow it down, I, I may need some help on it. Do you need my help? Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. You hear that? I am not on anything that I know of or aware of. I am not hallucinating at all. I have no idea. No idea. Um, I guess we can only draw to the conclusion that per... Is the pedal talking? Mm. Okay. I guess I'm just gonna suspend, suspend all disbelief, and I'm going to just accept what is going on right now, right here, right now. Um, sure. Um, could you, I guess, help me in, ex you know, helping people at home understand how, how this, how your functionality is. Sorry, I'm just. I still can't believe what I'm seeing. Of course, because the pedal, of course, is me. I am a dynamic hold reverb with modulation. My knob controls how you manipulate your instrument signal as it enters the pedal. All of my reverb supply are very long and very washy in ways that can sail you to uncharted areas of sonic seas. That sounds actually pretty awesome. I love reverbs that can get really washy. And honestly, I love all reverbs because, you know, like Pokemon, I, I got to catch them all. Pokemon, gotta catch them all. Can you tell me about the functionality of your knobs? The rate and depth parameters change per each mode, but universally, the mix decay input controls are the same in each mode. Decay controls the tails on my rhythm. And the mix knob blends how much of your dry signal you want. So, you can go 100% dry or 100% ocean depths wet with my reverb. Okay, that, that keeps it pretty simple and straightforward. Um, can you explain to me what your input control does? Input level controls the amount of signal that comes in from your instrument that will be sent to my reverb algorithm. The more inputs of your signal that is sent, the more reverb. Oh my god, so much reverb. The gates of heaven were practically visualized before you set to match. If you turn the input to zero and turn the decay to max, then it will freeze my reverb to produce an infinite sustain. Oh yeah, I remember reading something about that in my first pass of the manual. Um, I actually do like the way you explain it in which, you know, the decay is put on high and then you strum a chord or a note and you then, from that point, quickly turn the knob to zero. And from that point, it locks in and freezes the signal, which is really great. But if I'm playing guitar, it's not like I can stop doing that and then suddenly, like, okay, I want to turn a bunch of knobs now. Like, that doesn't, you know, doesn't always work out. Um, what, is there another way to do equivalent of the same thing for, like, a quick freeze of the signal? Is there another way to do that? The ALT button will jump into an immediate freeze mode, which is really fun. Excellent! 
The other thing that I read is that the guitar, once it kind of is put into this freeze mode, the tone on the guitar becomes dry. So let's say you want to put any distortion, any fuzz on top of it. The pad's going to stay there that the reverb creates. You then can pretty much solo over it or do anything on top of this reverb. So if you're locking in something in key, you can play whatever you want, either modal for practice or you want to do like a great, you know, solo, you know, a little solo there. Um, so I also see that you have a three-way switch there. There is a tape home pass you think you can explain that to me you know like one at a time i sure can tape mode is a vibrato applied to the reverb signal that is a lopsided lfo for those old tape machine wobbly goodness wait What's an LFO? By LFO, I mean low frequency oscillator that shifts and rises by a small amount and then lowers again as a form of modulation. So which of the two knobs above your, above you controls the oscillation and which controls the pitch shifting? The rate knob settings controls the vibrato, which is how often oscillation occurs. And the depth knob is how much the LFO pitch shifts up and down, akin to one riding the rolling waves. But be careful, don't get seasick with the rate amount. So uh, you want to show these uh, good people at home, uh, you know, what some examples of this mode are with me? I'd love to. Clean tone. of my reverb signal. 
The rate knob controls the time of all my four stack delays. And depth knob controls the frequency or resonance of the delays on your signal. These four short delays can sound almost like a fixed flanger. Sounds to me like you can get a really nice washy uh, texture behind anything you do, like either it's a textural like pad to play over or, you know, you're doing some kind of lead and you want some kind of texture behind the tails of whatever it is you're playing at that point in time. It actually sounds like it's really nice. I like this mode already. Uh, anything in particular that you enjoy creating in this mode? If you turn the rate knob high, then it becomes an echoing cavern of dwelling reverb with your more percussive notes to stutter within it. Would you say, though, that it kind of sounds similar to, like, maybe, like, a Earthquaker Devices Afterneath with its drag control? V2, not the V3. The V3 is completely different. Uh... It sounds kind of similar to that pedal. Who is that, darling? Is that someone I should know? <clears throat> I'm sorry, but this is a one pedal show. <laughs> As I told Lady Freeze when I pulled her plug, this is a one woman show. I am so sorry. I didn't mean to offend you, talking pedal. Um, please don't be offended. Um, please keep telling me everything about what you can do. I did not again. Not my intention. Never happened. That pedal does not live here. I know nothing about what I just... Just forget. Just forget I said it. Please, please go on. Turn the depth of high and you will hear swell of oscillation that borders spiraling into madness. And then, rest assured, I will pull you away gently just before reaching the brink. That's really kind of you because there's just some pedals out there that would just chuck you into the cold infinite depths of oscillation madness, sometimes even forcefully. This is Sparta! Oh my, no, I would never do that to you. Trust me, I am so glad you are not like any of those other pedals out there. So, you ready to show me some examples of this mode with me? Let's go! Pass mode creates a sample hold with a random LFO on the rate, which dictates how quickly the cutoff of those frequencies are. 
It applies the reverb before the bandpass and after. The depth knob controls the range of potential frequencies. If you turn the rate all the way down and only control the depth, you then control the frequency to be either light or dark reverb in this mode. It acts as a way like a voice control on my reverb. So, how dark are we really talking? Are we talking about, like, dark stars, depths of despair type of reverb? Oh, heavens no. I know my limits. <laughs> I'm really happy that's the case because there is really only one dark star, really, and we don't really need... Another dark star. I'm sure some people out there will have multiples. I know some of you. And, uh, you know, I don't need the room being, uh, you know, uh, a dark place to be in. We need some light in the world. Some light. And that's where you come in, sunlight. And I'm really enjoying everything that we're going over together. But I did see, when I was reading through the manual on my first pass, um, that there was a suggestion for one of the settings that talked about bubbles. Um, let me see if I can read this right. It's an interesting uh, name. It, the way it, if I mispronounce it, I'm sorry. Um, it's read here as a uh, blip delonk glack. And I think I probably just spoke Klingon for the first time here. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, you think you could maybe explain uh, what the knobs, you know, control this effect to kind of get that bubbly texture on your signal? Right on the high will give you the sounds of bubbles rising to the water's surface and texture with the frequency of modulation shifts. So are you ready for the next Sonic Adventure and showing everyone at home what this mode can do? Gladly. Now, let me explain the ALT function and expression controls. Hold the bypass and ALT switch for six seconds and the LED in its lovely, lovely sun will start blinking.
Please don't pet me. No petting, thank you. I don't wanna be petted. Do not pet. Uh -uh. You can go pet your mom or something. No, no, no petting, no petting. Get your petty paws away from me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, son. <laughs> you cannot control me. You can. Okay, okay. You can have a. You can have a little control. But I'm still in charge. I can attack any minute. But you can control for like a second. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> you can set the rates, depth, and decay along with input controls individually, or all at once which is great for versatility. It's a quick way to go from casual playing to a wild, crazy hold on the parameter of the signal. That'd actually be really great for some momentary shifts in a song. Just you can just go into that big loud sound and then you can quickly get out of it whenever that part ends. With an expression added, the only difference is that you must move your foot forward to ramp up the expression or roll it back to get some slow rolling waves to high frequency shifts. I work really well with an expression ramper too. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. I know what you mean. <laughs> I know what you mean. Say no more. Say no more. If you really want to soar to highest highs and darkest depths, pair me with a dark star in parallel for a unique tone blend of rhythm alongside your dry signal. Well, let's give him a taste of what that sounds like.
Well, I hope this helps you understand all the things that we can do together. Wow. Ah, uh, this is definitely a different trajectory that my day went. <laughs> Um, I really appreciate your helping me and trying to explain to everyone at home how the functionality of your dynamic reverb works. I'm really thankful. Do you mind if I bar you for a little bit longer and maybe you could... I know I may be asking a bit much, but do you think maybe you can uh, join me with the house band and we can, you know, paint the air with a little bit of your sonic hues and, uh, you know... Light the night on fire. That would be lovely. I would very much like that. I hope you all at home really enjoyed that kind of unexpected experience that I had today. I'm actually really glad that I got to share that with you because no one would believe me. <laughs> yeah, that's, I don't know whether we're going to have to talk to someone about that. But anyway, uh, like, subscribe, stick around. We can see what else may happen. Um, it's going to be an interesting ride. <laughs> I don't know if any other pedals will be speaking. Um, but yeah, stick around and... Uh, most of Pedal Playhouse is going to be playing with pedals, hearing what they sound like, exploring what they're capable of, and yeah, just kind of sharing the things that we love that unites us together as a gear community and uh, brings us together under that one love. So, uh, you know, be safe out there and be excellent to each other. Uh, Sunlight, uh, can you uh, say goodbye to everyone at home? Ta-ta for now. Ta-ta for now, everyone.